E. coli is an organism that everyone has heard about, maybe just because of the spinach that you would have bought at the grocery store. But it's also been a workhorse of biology for the last century. One of the things that's important to the life of any bacterial cell is building its protective and very distinctive cell wall. Each bacterium is constantly growing, but also constantly shedding parts of its cell wall, sort of akin to the way a snake sheds its skin every so often. One of the body's basic capabilities for spotting bacterial pathogens is by detecting the cell wall material that's constantly being shed. If a bacterial cell could get rid of its cell wall, it could effectively go undercover and avoid giving off these signals that trigger the infected host to mount a response against this invader. The story of our experiments actually begins a long time before I got to Stanford. It was inspired by the work of Nobel Prize winning geneticist Joshua Lederberg. In the 1950s, Lederberg dissolved the cell wall of E. coli cells by using an antibiotic that you're probably familiar with called penicillin. Once the cell wall was gone, Lederberg washed away the penicillin, and remarkably, over the course of a single day, Lederberg showed that the E. coli cells would go through a dramatic transformation of shapes, and that at the end of a single day, they would revert back to something that looked like a normal E. coli cell. Using modern microscopy, we were able to replicate his observations and capture this entire process using a time-lapse movie. In the process, we were able to record how cells built a new wall without having an existing wall as a template. In addition, this also taught us the basic rules of how they grow under normal circumstances. In particular, we found that one protein played a very key role in this process. At the start of this movie, you see normal E. coli cells. They're elongated in the classic pill or rod shape. As these cells are treated with antibiotic, they lose their rod shape and become these amorphous blobs. We call these blobs L-forms. Then, as the time lapse proceeds, the antibiotic is washed away, and we watch the cells revert back to a normal shape. One of the things we wanted to discover was which molecular players allow the cells to engage in this behavior, where they can exist without a cell wall, but then bring back that cell wall when they need to. These molecular players are called proteins. They work together, sort of like an orchestra, where different proteins perform the various actions required to build the cell wall. We had a suspicion that the conductor of this whole orchestra, a protein known as MREB, might also be critical for this process of reverting back to their normal cell shape. And what we found was very stark. We did a variation of the basic experiment, where after we suppress cell wall growth with one antibiotic, we rinse that out and use a second, different antibiotic that inhibited MREB. In the second time-lapse video, the cells just expand in size without growing back into their normal rod-like shape. They just become bigger L-forms that eventually burst and die. This was a great example of basic research to try to understand fundamental cellular processes. But at the same time, it may also help us understand how to develop new antibiotics to overcome the resistance that bacteria are developing to existing treatments. 